Smart Lock for Passwords is a great technology that lets you sign in only once across all of your devices. Today I'm meeting with Stephen Sonev of the Google Identity Platform to learn more about it. And Stephen, you're the product manager for the Google Identity Platform, right? Sounds like you work on some pretty cool technologies. Yeah, that's right. So I'm product manager for all of our APIs and services that we provide to third parties around security and authentication basically knowing who their users are and uh, helping them get signed in and signed up as easily as possible. Important job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I know you wrote this blog post recently about Smart Lock for Passwords. Could you, could you tell us a little bit about that and what it is and what, what's so great about it? Sure, so Smart Lock is one of our recent additions to the set of APIs we offer. Uh, it came out last year at Google I.O. Um, okay. Basically, functionality to save and retrieve information about how people sign into a third-party app. So if you okay. use an app like Netflix, you can save your login information either from Chrome, if you've saved your password there, or when you next time you sign into the app, and then retrieve it when you come back, so that if you have a new phone, you don't have to remember that username and password anymore. Oh, cool. And so if I've signed in in Chrome, it will remember it when I sign in on my phone? Exactly, yeah. Oh, so nice. any information you've saved with Google can help you sign in as easily as possible. Cool. Now, I see you have a demo lined yeah, up Yeah, so can let's I actually see, see how it works. So typically, when you're trying to log into an app like Netflix, you'll see a username and password field like that. You have to enter your username, your password, you have to remember what those are, which can be pretty tricky if you signed up a year ago. But now the idea is that if you're using one of the Smart Lock APIs, you can restart the app, pretend this is a brand new install now, and instead of having to re-enter that information, you see this screen, which is basically explaining to the user what their saved information has been used to help log them in, even automatically, without ever having to remember what that username and password is. Cool. And with that, you're in. That's really neat. Yeah. And if I, like, you can see kids are there, so if I'm sharing an account with my kids, I can do that also? Exactly. So yeah, it'll work for anyone who has access to that Google account, so that if you've got a, even a shared device, it'll nice. be a completely seamless experience. Cool. And now I said, I heard you're also working on like tokenizing this, so that it's your actual Google account on the device is used. Yeah, so you mentioned the blog post that we had recently, and so the blog post talks about not just saving and retrieving things like passwords, but actually right. going beyond passwords and okay. moving over to token-based authentication that if you basically use something like the Gmail address on your device as the account for your third-party apps or your sites, okay. that we can retrieve information about that when you're signed in on this device with that account. Right. Okay. That um, if you're already signed in, then there's no need to enter passwords manually to your third-party apps. They can check that it's actually you right. <laughs> and uh, save the password entry and maybe even sign you up with just one tap. That's really cool. Now, if I'm a developer, if I'm building an app like this one that you just showed me, what kind of things do I need to do to take advantage of the smart lock for passwords? Yeah, so starting point is just checking out developers.google.com slash identity and going into the smart lock section there. Okay. And what you'll see is that it's a pretty simple interface. You can save information, you can retrieve information. Okay. Um, there's an additional API method to show a picker, like an email picker that can help fill, you, fill a sign up form really easily with one tap, you'll get name and picture and okay. email address all filled in. And uh, then if you can save that information, even use the token to skip things like email verification or password entry, nice. it could make it a very smooth experience in your app. Nice. And not just smooth, right? It can also help make it more secure. Because I know when I've gone onto various sites or various apps and I need to sign up, and sometimes there's a lot of information that I need to put in. But if they were implementing something like this, they can get the best of knowing that I am who I say that I am when I sign up, but I'm also more secure and not giving out personal information to a third party when I don't need to, is that right? Yeah, exactly. So we're really moving towards this model of basically only providing the essential information at the time that someone is signing up and right. trying to ask for more information later, kind of in context when it's most relevant, okay. so that the user has most control over what they're providing to the third party apps. Okay. And when it is provided, we're hoping to provide it in the form of these tokens, which can be verified and authenticated and ensuring that it's only that person and not just somebody who knows the password who's okay. trying to access the okay. account. And then also if, uh, if the particular app needs to do things that require incremental authorization, like, I don't know, accessing my driver calendar, that's something that the API also offers, right? Yep. So that's actually offered as part of a broader set of APIs around um, logging in with Google services. Okay. Um, in the same place, uh, developers.google.com slash identity. Okay. Check out how you can integrate all the 
okay. uh, Google APIs that are out there into your app cool. or service. And, and, and we found, I, I don't remember the, the exact figures right now, maybe you do, but like we found that when people implement auth like this, instead of rolling their own auth, that the actual user retention is much greater, right? Yeah, yeah. So typically what we found in some of the studies we've done is that if someone sees a sign-in screen, uh, in the order of half of people will not complete it or not complete it correctly, anything from a forgotten password to uh, creating a duplicate account. And by saving this information so that when they come back, you can really reduce those errors and make it much more impactful that all the downloads that you get on your app can be made to good use. Right, so by implementing this properly, for users it's more secure and it's more convenient, and then for developers it also helps you retain your users right. Yeah, exactly. The Netflix example, we did a case study with them recently saying that in the order of 20% of their cost uh, for support about password recoveries and account recoveries has wow. been... Wow, uh, just wiped been, out. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, reduced by using these APIs and it uh, looks promising for the future that it could get even better with things like tokens. Pretty cool. So to get started, developers. Sorry, developers.google.com slash identity. Yep, that's right. Well, thank you, Stephen. Well, thank you, Lawrence, and I have Ooh. something for you. Oh, swag! I always love swag. Great work recently with the identity team. We have here a nice. hoodie for you from Ooh. the Google authentication Google and, security and security team. Nice. Well, thank you, Stephen. I'll be sure to wear this at my next Google. <laughs> So thanks a lot, Stephen. I really appreciate the time that you spent with us. And if you've got any questions for us, just please leave them below and check out the links in the description. 